the matters which are before us today. The three matters which are before us today are not here on the basis that some conservatory orders were issued per se. I have stated and I'm repeating. The reason why these matters are before us today is that after the issuance of the conservatory orders, subsequent applications were filed. The applications were filed after the empanelment. Those applications were filed online with, the, with matters online. And it is on the basis of only the applications which were filed and dealt with online. That is why we are here today. So I want to correct the insinuation that we are here only to deal with uh, uh, the, 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 I mean, the matters in which conservatory orders were issued. We don't know how many conservatory orders were issued. We are only here to deal with specifically the application of paper five, which came to our attention. So kindly let us be as factual as possible. We will deal with all the matters, I can assure you. There is no issue about any of the things you are raising. If you have any substantive issue, we are here. If the application for refusal, there is no problem. We will hear. If we feel we have to get a copy, there should be no problem. We are all here to defend the constitution of Kenya. So don't you worry. Don't don't you worry. Give us time. Let's take this thing step by step and we will do the best we can as a bench. Allow us to worry when we are crowned. You know, when you argue, uh, like uh, the way Mr. Mbaya has argued, that court sat on Saturday, you are arguing on both sides of the court. You know that we work, we work online. And most of you know that matters reach us any time, at any time, whether at night, and that is what the new constitution and the e-filing system has brought to this country. So when you argue selectively, you mislead the people. You mislead, you mislead the out people outside there that cause sat on a Saturday. There's nothing like that. We attend to matters online as and when they come. But let we have had the samurai. We, let us not be an exchange between between the court and yourself, because we are really very neutral party. Let us hear also from, from the other side. We haven't. We haven't really. Yeah. Yeah. The deputy president is the second respondent, first respondent in fact. We haven't said our piece. And Elisha Ongoya will be making a submission. But my Lord, do give us this very meeting. This E015 in Kilogo, the orders of your brother, Mr. Justice Mungo, were given at 4 p.m. Where did the file come from Kirinyaga to go to the Deputy Chief Justice? It is two hours drive from Kirinyaga. When did the Deputy Chief Justice sit in the middle of the night to find? To give them permit us, permit us to articulate these issues for the sake of the nation. We are not just dealing with the removal and the challenge to the removal of the deputy president. We are dealing about the president that will be set for the removal of deputy presidents in future and the removal of presidents in future. Uh, 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 uh. I don't, I don't preside in that. I want to renew my request that the court permit us to be ordered. We are now about to hear a second speech, a third speech, a fourth speech. This court, as we have been told by the senior most advocate here, is a court of record. What application are we hearing? so that we on this side can prepare to respond. We cannot respond to speeches. There is an application here, if I may, the Honorable P.K. Waiter, 
there is an application for the recusal of judges. It is the right of my learned colleagues to bring such an application. But having brought it, they should then confine themselves to it. Then we can respond to it. But we cannot sit here all afternoon listening to speech after speech intended for another audience other than this one. Um, no let, 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 let us be clear on this. The applications before this court, we have stated which applications are in this court for hearing today. We have no authority to call any other file because files, when they, there's a prayer for impanelment of our ends, those files go directly to the home of the Chief Justice. So we have no authority to call any other file to ourselves. That will be quite unprocedural. So what we have here are the three files which we mentioned, in which there are interim orders where one party is seeking to leave those orders. If there is an application for recusal or whatever it is, I think you really need to put it on record so that we deal with it and before any other thing we can deal with it and uh, dispose of it one way or the other. But uh, I don't think it's, it's really necessary to have speeches in the absence of specific. leadership, the so-called speeches, have been um, invited by the disclosure from the court. We, the advocates appearing for the petitioners, we were not aware of how the bench was constituted. So when it was disclosed to us that the bench was constituted by the Deputy Chief Justice, it necessitated us to address you, your lordships, on Article 165, Clause 4 on the constitutionality of the constitution of this bench to hear these three specific files. And that is the issue that we want to address even before we go to the application for the QC. Because it's our humble view, your lordship, that the so-called empowerment of this bench to hear these specific files is itself unconstitutional. By the reading of Article 165, Clause 4, it is our reading that the only person who has the capacity to empanel a bench is a chief justice. So we want to urge this court to perhaps in, uh, interpret for us whether the deputy chief justice can empanel a bench. Number two, your lordship, is when did, where did the chief justice get the authority to empanel the bench? Was the chief justice present? Why did the Chief Justice execute her functions and her mandate under Article uh, 165, Clause 4? What was the necessity of the delegation of this function? Those are pertinent issues, Your Lordship, that requires clarification before we go to the root of the matter, the crux of the matter. It's our submissions, Your Lordship, that the Chief Justice, who is exercising delegated powers, cannot further delegate the Deputy Chief Justice. That's why the Constitution is in white and black that the obligations and the duty belongs to the Chief Justice. Finally, Your Lordship, the reason why we find ourselves in this situation is because of what the court is struggling to explain to us. That three files have graciously generated expediency, and the other files that were consolidated, that six file with the lead file two for 522, have no reasons why this should be before you. Noting that your lordship, those matters were equally satisfied as urgent and raising heavy constitutional matters. When I looked at your orders, your lordship, that you issued to some on us today, you repeated the same, that they raise weighty constitutional matters. Why are we being discriminated by the court that our files are not considered as a priority and that the files with orders are the only ones that the court is sitting on a Saturday, the Chief Justice is empowering, the, the Deputy Chief Justice is empowering the bench. We are called, like, uh, in a lightning speed, to appear before you. 
Is it not because there are some orders that the state wants to vacate? You cannot run away from that reality, your lordship, most respectively. My lord, with your kind permission, for the record, uh, Dr. Kamoto for the fifth respondent, in his team. I believe the reason we are here and the reason why we took quorum is because we recognize that there are different parties in these proceedings. <coughs> so it will be abominable for a section of the parties to seek to colonize these proceedings and treat them as if they are the only ones entitled to the audience of the court. So in this regard, my proposal is as follows that each of the parties who has whose representation has been taken gets an opportunity to indicate to the court what applications they have before the court so that we are able to proceed methodically. And each party then, the court can then give directions on how we move to treat each of those applications. Otherwise, we may be here indefinitely if each of the parties takes the opportunity accorded to make lamentations, to make speeches, <coughs> and to mourn. So we respectively urge that we get an opportunity for each of the parties to ventilate the issues because the federal respondent has a pending application which is being filed, a preliminary objection which even contests the jurisdiction of the High Court to hear the matters because it is a matter relating to the nomination of a presidential, of a deputy president, which in our view lies squarely within the domain of the Supreme Court. So we once accorded an opportunity procedurally, we shall ventilate all those issues and hopefully the matters being raised or to be raised about recusal and so on, they will fall by the wayside. Thank you, my lord. For the fifth interest, for the first interest in part of the Mr. Lord, just yes. uh, I, I was about to interject uh, when Mr. Uh, uh, when Council, uh, uh, Mr. Nokubek, the other one. The Gwaji? Yes. Mr. Yes. Lord was uh, addressing, and that is exactly uh, why I wanted to. I wanted us to have order in the way we, we, we conduct this proceeding. And I was about to ask Mr. Ndegwa, uh, after all that, what is your application? Your Lordship, I'm very clear in my application. My application for which the application the, 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 come after I ask you. We, we are now the second application. You respond. Well, what is it that you want? Your Lordship, permit me to make an application under the Mutunga rules <coughs> that following the disclosure of the court this morning, that was made by Justice Murima, that this Honorable Court does determine whether the Deputy Chief Justice has the power to empanel the bench under Article 65, Clause 4. Your Lordship, and whether, if she has any power of that nature, the same ought to be communicated to the members of the Republic by the Chief Justice, that, that is to say, Your Lordship, that the Chief Justice has delegated her powers under Article 165, Clause 4, to empanel this bench. Your Lordship, this is the background of my application that on the 14th of October, 2024, the Honorable Chief Justice did, did empanel this bench to hear and adjudicate over six matters which were consolidated with the lead file being 522. And the files that were consolidated your lordships, my lady, were two 522, 
Your Lordship, it is our humble submissions that this bench was exclusively and paneled to handle those files. And that the communication was effectively made to the parties by the Honorable Chief Justice. I am giving the background of my application. And that we are aware that subsequently other files, and the most important one is E014 of 2024, which came from Kerogoya, was equally selected for empanelment before the Chief Justice. To date, Your Lordship, there is no communication from the Office of the Chief Justice other than this morning that this file was equally empaneled and designated for hearing by this bench. Your Lordship, the other, uh, the other ground is this, Your Lordship, that when we appeared before you on the 16th of October, Your Lordship, we sought your indulgence, Your Lordship, to have a further mention on the 18th of October. Your Lord, I'm sorry we are constrained to interject, uh, to seek your guidance. My name is Muzomi, appearing for Professor Kindiki. Listening to my colleagues, he is making an application before this bench complaining about wrongs supposedly made by the Chief Justice 